Here we go. Okay, Tate, do you this remember, okay. do you remember, gosh, man, this is, oh, damn, almost 20 years ago now, but a little less mm. than, I spent five years with a woman hurting her mm. almost every day for five years, not intentionally, mm. but simply by the fact that I wasn't fully choosing her. Mm. I, I do remember. I do remember. And... I also remember for 10, the first 10 years of my marriage, uh, doing the same. So, you know, I, I wrote a blog about that, which mm. you also may remember. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Called, laughs> Choose her every day or leave yeah. her. And yeah. I, the, the, the subject of our episode today, the topic of our episode today is presence, mm. presence in men and particularly our lack of presence, not yeah. certainly in intimate relationship, but how that shows up uh, in other places, everywhere in our lives, yeah. potentially. But yeah. I want to start by just reading the first few paragraphs of that blog. That blog, mm. that blog hit a nerve. It, you know, it's one of those blogs that I, I, I was writing so many blogs at that time that I forgot most of what I had written. And that blog blew up like three months after I actually wrote yeah, it. Yeah, you wrote it, but published it. It sat there for it. a little while. And yep. then all of a sudden you were like, wait a minute, what's happening? A million people a day were reading that blog for a while. And so um, that really changed the game for me just professionally. but it, And it also revealed for me a deep, deep pain that 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 the world mm. in many ways was carrying. And so I want to just yeah. start by reading the first few paragraphs and we'll we'll launch from there. Yeah. I spent 5 years hurting a good woman by staying with her but never fully choosing her. I did want to be with this one. I really wanted to choose her. She was an exquisite woman, brilliant and funny and sexy and sensual. She could make my whole body laugh with her quick dark wit and short circuit my brain with her exotic beauty. Waking up every morning with her snuggled in my arms was my happy place. I loved her wildly. Unfortunately, as happens with many young couples, our ignorance of how to do love well quickly created stressful challenges in our relationship. Hmm. And before long, once my early morning blissful reverie gave way to the strained, immature ways of our everyday life together, I would often wonder if there was another woman out there who was easier to love hmm. and who could love me better. And as the months passed and that thought reverberated more and more through my head, I chose her less and less. Every day for five years, I chose her a little less. I stayed with her. I just stopped choosing her. And we both suffered. Mm. So that's where I'll stop. No. I'll certainly go, go more into the story. And, but <clears throat> so we're talking about presence. Well, I think, I think one of the things that I, I just want to say that's so uh, true to me uh, about that is we often, we often talk about that the, the two hardest things that there are two of the hardest, maybe they're not the hardest, but two of the hardest things that there are for us to do as men is to consistently show up and to speak up. And our experience with men is that we, we know how to show up but then we stop showing up and yeah. then we might show up again and then stop showing up. And unfortunately the people that are in our lives, when we are showing up and stop showing up, they don't know that we're count honorable. And when we do that in relationships, the, there's a tremendous lack of safety that gets created inside of that. Then there's turmoil that that happens. And then we don't necessarily know how to speak up and talk about now the dynamics that start to get be exchanged inside of that. And so what I'm just present to is how fucking real that that blog mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. uh, whether or not you you're just getting into a relationship, you're five years in or you're 50 years in. I think there is there is a struggle to figure out how to show up and speak up in ways that really honor what's going on for us and our partner. So I, I do think there's a universal truth inside of it. Well, I'm thinking of uh, just, just, was it yesterday? We heard from one of the men that we were, uh, that we're working with right now that remember he said those words, I thought I could count on him. We mm -hmm. were talking about, mm -hmm. about the yes, ways yeah, in yes. which we men were, have been, were let down by older men in our, in our youth, by the yeah, ways in which, yeah. Uh, we were in some way exploited or dismissed or demeaned or criticized uh, by by older men 
as we were growing up learning what it is to be a man. And I'll never get, forget that, that that guy told a story and the thing he said, mm. I thought I could count on him. Right. And, yeah, and I think what happens good. for all exactly. of us men, right. We, we, we've been so let down by the elder men in our lives, right. We, we learn to not be able to count on men that in some bizarre and tragic twist of fate, we tend to then become men that can't be counted on yeah. by well, that, particularly in relationship. And I think what you're pointing to by, by that story is, 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 is trying to help us tap into why, right? Why do we struggle to powerfully show up? And the first <laughs> point that, that you're, I think, really sharing is that there are not a lot of examples that we have in our life of when there have been consistency, uh, consistent male presence that has been in our life, whether or not it's our fathers or family members or, or older mentors or whatever, like it's, it's very rare that we've had an example of a man who's consistently showing up in his life in all of the ways that matter. My, like people show up for their work. My father showed up tremendously mm -hmm. for work. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and he tried to show up, but he was, his generation was really revered as a provider generation. And that's the way he knew how to show up. But in these other ways, it was a real struggle. I think that, that, that why the first is we don't have examples. What, one of the things that, that has always really, uh, I don't know, you've, you've phrased, you, you've, you've created a phrase, the masculine checkout syndrome. Yeah. And, and you know, that does also speak to why. So t tell us more yeah, about the yeah. masculine checkout syndrome and why that leads yeah. to not powerfully showing up. Yeah. I had that, made that observation quite, quite a number of years ago now. Uh, and again, looking at my own life as, as uh, inspiration for, mm -hmm. for, um, my own awakening into these challenges that, that men face. And yeah. so masculine checkout syndrome, I, I define masculine checkout syndrome is, is, it's like a, my, my body is in the room. I'm physically present, but emotionally, maybe even mentally, I'm gone. Mm, yeah. I'm somewhere else. I'm, I'm either emotionally distant. You know, my, my emotions, my feelings, they have, they have retreated. You know, I've retreated to that, what I call that masculine, that icy masculine tundra mm. where <laughs> nothing, no life can actually thrive. But, you know, hey, it's, there's, it's, it's, it's quiet there yeah, it's yeah. uh <laughs> you know i don't have to feel anything and and yet and yet i can and i can be in the same room with for example my intimate partner or even yeah. another male friend or i can just yeah. be in the same room but uh you, you can't feel me i'm i'm yeah. i'm gone i'm gone yeah and this you know the one point, one thing that i wanted to to acknowledge too is you know when when we talk about not being counted on or like I want to acknowledge that most men can be counted on in a crisis. No, hundred percent. You know, when shit really hits the fan, we'll fucking be there. Yeah. But, you know, I remember asking a guy once, uh, I may have asked a group of men, I can't remember, but I remember asking this question, like, you know, who do you have to call when you, when you really need someone? You know, do you have anybody that you can really yeah. call when you need them? And I remember this guy saying, oh, yeah, I've got a bunch of people that I can call in mm. a crisis. I was like, well, when was the last time you had a crisis yeah. in which you needed to call them? He's like, damn, I actually don't remember. Right. Years? I'm not sure I ever have. Right. And so what we're talking about is the daily showing up, you know, yeah. that showing up consistency. You use that word consistency. And we men in our everyday lives, because life is Life is, is challenging. There's so many problems, especially these yeah. days, maybe, maybe probably surely forever. But these days, yeah. the complexity of what, what we're carrying in our brains yes. in, in our modern lives is overwhelming. Oh, man. And I, I, I think it is, it is hard to argue that more has, is being expected of men in our society today than mm. at any point in mm. history ever before. And it's also true that more is being expected of women, but, but what I want to, so it's, it's not, this is not a mutually exclusive conversation, but just to really acknowledge men are yes, largely still going out there. And, and again, women are stepping into provider role, but, but men have, have generationally taken on the, the 
belief that they need to be making a living. I have, we, we have a very dear friend that's a stay at home dad and struggles with, mm. with that because just societally, the, the appreciation of that is not where it needs to be. So we need to be providers. We also now have relational expectations about how to show up in intimacy with skills that we've never been taught before on how to do that. Yeah. We need to be able to show up as fathers in the world and how to really be the fathers that our kids are needing us to be. Not necessarily the father that I want to be, but I think about often about Alexa and Tate, what is, what is the kind of father that I need to be? Then I have my own personal growth and development that I'm trying to show up for. I have my own desires and habits and hobbies that I really want to be leaning into. So now more than ever, men are being asked to show up in every way. Yeah. And it's really hard to show up at a hundred percent in every aspect of our life, but the expectation seems to be there. And the weight of that is sometimes too, too much to carry. Now throw on top of all of that, we're in, and again, we're approaching this largely through the, the frame of intimate relationship, but certainly mm. the, 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 the impact and our experience of lack of presence can, can, and does filter throughout our entire lives. But just through the frame of intimate relationship, first off, we men, we're not taught to, to, we're not really taught connection when we're, mm. when we're younger, if anything, we're taught disconnection. Yeah. We're taught to not connect to ourselves, to disconnect from our own emotions, disconnect from our own feelings, put our own needs aside or suppress them, right? Men aren't supposed to have needs. We're taught to value especially in the West, hyper independence, right? Don't depend on anybody. Mm. Don't allow yourself yeah. to need Pull anybody. Pull yourself up it's, by your own bootstraps. By your own bootstraps, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, and, then, and then on top of that, let's throw even some more on top of this. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the very primal mm. dance of masculine and feminine values, the, the masculine value of freedom yeah. and how on a, on a very primal level, Typically, we men, women too, in their own way, but typically men tend to be a stand for freedom, the value of freedom. And that can mean different things to different people, but just in, in relationship, the tension between freedom and, and connection, the feminine value of connection, like on the surface, yeah. they seem yeah. mutually exclusive. You're either free or you're connected. Which is it? And yeah. that's a, a, yeah. another tension that men regularly feel in relationship um, because we don't know how to do connection and we tend to be a stand for freedom first. We tend to feel connected when we feel free first. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So anyway, there's yeah, and, all and in today's world, when we, we we're really being asked to have by ourselves to have a hundred percent freedom and to be a hundred percent connected that how do how in the world you t often tell the story of, you know, mission impossible how yeah. sacrificing mission right. Yeah, sa right. Would, uh, right the masculine rarely if ever really will sacrifice uh mission yeah. for relationship he's for being asked yeah. to always sac do it the other way around yeah. i think that yeah. that's really compelling and true yeah. but yeah. in a modern time why do we struggle yeah. to powerfully show up all the time yeah. because we're trying to show up for freedom and connection and that's not an easy balancing act to try to skate that razor's edge well, I, I love, I'm, I'm even reminded of Game of Thrones. Remember the, the men on the wall in the north? Mm, uh, right, the, of course. The, the, Knights, the Knights Watch, the Knights their, watch. their yeah. whole motto was, yeah. was love is the death of duty. Yeah, right, right. Love is the death of duty. And they were doing the most noble thing of all, which is right. was sacrificing everything for duty. Like that was yeah. held up as this high ideal, same in Mission Impossible. Tom yeah. Cruise, he's, yeah. he, he's, yeah. he can't have a wife because he has to save the world. Right. Like that's written into the plot. Yeah, of course. So anyway, we get into relationship and now, yeah. you know, our, our, and, and there's this expectation or this belief, like if I just do everything I'm supposed to do as a man, mm. my wife should be happy. Mm. My, my, my partner should just be happy. I remember I told Sylvie early in our relationship, <laughs> ha half joking, but, but also kind of not joking. I said, babe, look. If you will just always be happy and thrilled, we'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I need from you. Just be happy and thrilled all yeah. the time. Yeah. Oh, she was I... immediately not happy and thrilled That's when weird. I said that. That's weird. Yeah. Immediately that. So naturally then 
in, in the face of all of that, it is so easy for yeah. us men to just be like, fuck it. In yeah. the moment, fuck it. I'm doing right. all of this. I'm holding all of this. It still ain't working. That's I right. don't know what to do here. So fuck it. Uh, yeah. I'll stay in the room that, you know, that's masculine checkout syndrome. I'll, I'll either actually leave the relationship or leave or I'll, but I'll, or I'll stay in the room. Why? Because that's my fucking duty. Right. That's the duty. I'll kill love, but it doesn't matter. I'll st I'm I'm doing my duty. Yeah. Meanwhile, she's over there on the other side going, "You're here, but you're not fucking here." Yeah. Yeah, or I'm or you know, in my case, I'm in the room, but I'm not connected in the ways that she really needs me to be. I'll, I'll never forget this is I don't know, seven years ago or so. You love to tell this story because it was One such a, One of my a stark stories. moment. My my wife and I are having a difficult conversation, two really young kids uh, standing downstairs in our family room. And for 45 minutes, we had a conversation about what wasn't working in our relationship and things that we needed to, to do to improve it. And, you know, I, I come to the end of a 45 minute conversation and my wife says to me, I just don't feel connected to you. And I was like, yeah. what? what the fuck are you talking about? Like, yeah, I just yeah. spent 45 minutes talking about us, talking about our relationship, talking about what we could do to improve. Like I'm in the same room as you. What I'm not doing any, what do you mean? Yeah. And, and I was, I, I was so baffled. It's, it's like, that's the dumbest shit ever. I was so <laughs> baffled because yeah. You know, what I didn't realize at the time is that when I'm in solving mode, mm. which I have a tendency to go into is trying to mm. solve the problem that's being presented to me. And if my wife is talking about problems in the relationship, I'm going to jump in and solve it. Solving is not connecting. Solving is not meeting, attuning to connecting with what she's actually saying and letting her know that that her feelings matter to me. I had no idea yeah. Yeah. how to communicate those things. And so, you know, one of the things that we laugh about often is that maybe sometimes unskillfully, but thank God we have feminine partners that will find ways to communicate to us and call us into great our, our greatness i would say again not always in skillful ways but but one of the things I, i'm curious to hear from you is like what what have you heard either in your own life or what do you hear men say that the messages that they're getting from their women to let them know that they're not being as fully present as their partners need them to be yeah uh, before I, I go into that, I want to uh, acknowledge and, and, and really underscore something you just said about going into fix it mode, solve mm. it mode. Yeah. When I, when I've worked with couples over these years, one of the things that I'm often teaching them is, is, is connection, how to connect. Mm. And I'm often, often, I, I want to say reminding, but it, actually they've never heard this before that, that connection time is not productive time. Hmm. Yeah. When you're connecting is not about getting shit done. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, we think again, we're having a conversation, we're solving, um, there's a problem. Clearly you're upset. There must be a problem that has to be solved. Let's fucking solve it. I still yeah. do that to this day. I'm still tempted with Sylvie when she's expressing an upset. I'm like, well, babe, this is what we need to do. Let's do, have we thought about this? Have we thought about right, that? And right. she just, she gives me that look that like, you know, it was like waving off an airplane landing and it's like, oh shit fuck I saw, i'm sorry uh, take a breath <laughs> right back up. this is not back this up. is not solving time this is just connecting time got yeah. it yeah so um which is just so it's just so not not uh, for, for most of us men that's just a foreign yeah, concept so sure. so what so what are some of the things that 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 men hear so like that i mean your wife said it to you i don't feel connected to you yeah. just that yeah. right i don't feel connected to you or you're not listening or I don't know mm. how to reach you. Mm. Or yeah. these sound, these sound the, familiar. These, these have you sound, heard these? these, these yeah, sound that's <laughs> that's because we came up with these from our own lives. You're 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 yeah. in the room, but it's it's like you're not here. Yeah, you know, or just or you're checked out. Or you know, this is this is this is one that 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 look as we're sharing these. Like I'm, I'm not saying that these are skillful ways of of that our that our partners give us feedback. A lot of yeah. this is very unskillful. It's very in our business. But what we what we what we're speaking to here is how does it 
how does the how does the feedback come, whether skillfully or otherwise, right. whether we want to hear it this way or not? What are some of the clues that we can get? Because a lot of times us men, like I don't know that I'm checked out. I'm just doing my thing. Right. right. I'm just doing my thing. And well, my thing and, is solving problems for the and, most and part. And what, what I have to remind myself of is that if if I'm listening for the love and 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 really trying to understand what my wife is trying to do. She's trying to let me know that I'm important to her, that I matter to her, that I'm a gift to her. And she's not saying it that way, but I do believe that the feedback right. that we're getting from our feminine partners, I do use this term intentionally that they are calling us into our greatness because yeah. I do believe that when we learn how to be more powerfully present in our intimate relationship, we are more powerfully present with the other men in our lives and with our children and with within the world of work. Like when we can practice it in one domain, it does carry over into others. And they're, 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 they're a demand that we step into our greatness. And there are some other conversations that I need to learn how to have about helping my wife share these messages with me in a, in a way that really I don't have to be triggered by. But if I'm listening for the love, they're the breadcrumbs that are helping me find my way. Well, I, I like that language, listen for the love. One of the ways I like to approach it is, is, is listen beneath the level of the complaint. Mm. Yeah. You know, if the, if the complaint is you, like, for example, one of the, one of the ways that men will often hear this feedback is, is like, you don't care about me, right? <laughs> right? You don't, you care more about X, Y, Z than our relationship. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that before. That is an immediate, um, my immediate visceral reaction is fuck you to that. <clears throat> That's not how, cause I'm immediately defensive because right. I know right. it's not true. Like, right. You know, these are one of my, my non-negotiable boundaries. I mean, my, in my relationship, like, like, you know, and Sylvia and I've talked about this over the years and she's really great, but I had to set some boundaries with her at the very beginning. Cause she, yeah. like, maybe another conversation for another podcast, right? Boundaries. But, um, uh, you know, most women have come into my business and told me what they think I care about yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that's so yeah. irritating, but yeah. <clears throat> when I'm listening beneath the level of the complaint, what I'm really hearing I'm hearing the vulnerability underneath of the love yeah. underneath that says, I don't feel cared about. I feel scared. I feel yeah. hurt. I feel alone. I'm, I'm, you know, the, the, the feminine, uh, one of the distinctions I like to work with is the, the, the masculine, what I call the masculine objection and the feminine objection. And these are these two arguments that these objections that can arise in any relationship argument, the masculine objection is don't tell me what to do. And the feminine objection is don't leave me alone in this. Don't mm. abandon me in this. Yeah. And we never say, we ne it never comes out in those exact languages. Well, that's not true. Sometimes the masculine is just straight up. Don't fucking tell me what to do. It is, it can be pretty militant, right? The feminine objection doesn't really, she, she rarely says, don't leave me alone in this. What she's often saying is, yeah, you don't, you care more about something else than about me mm. or, you know, you're checked out. Yeah. You're, you're, you're here, but you're not really here. Right. Right. You know, or you're not getting it. Things well, like I, this. And I think that what's, what we don't necessarily hear, what we're, what we're not really clued into until we look beneath the level of the complaint is what is the actual impact that's ha that the lack of our presence mm. is having, mm -hmm. right? What is the, what's yeah. the impact to ourselves and to our partners. And again, we're having this conversation yeah. in some ways in the relational realm, but as a father, like one of the, one of the, one of my, one of my most shameful memories is when both of my kids were really, really young and I, you know, my, my wife nursed, but she also, you know, there were bottles that I could give the kids is being with my kids, feeding my kids, but also scrolling on my phone. Mm. Like even as a child, not really tapping in eye to eye contact with my kids when they yeah. were that age. And yeah. did I do that all the time? Of course not. But, but as I think back about the presence that my, my kids needed then and my kids need now, when I'm lost in my head, thinking about my day, or I'm thinking about the week that I'm heading into, or I'm thinking about the problem that I'm trying to solve, and I'm sitting in front of my daughter when we're, we're having a meal together, and I'm not really attuned to her, there's an impact to her. 
There's an impact to employees that I work with. There, there's an impact. So I think that one of the things we have to be willing to do as men is look at what is the impact that our actions and our lack of presence is having on ourselves and to the people that we care about most. So talk to us a little bit about what, what you see as the impact. We'll, th we'll think also about you and me, our lack of presence with each other throughout our most of our adult lives mm -hmm. until we really reconnected in our what mid thirties ish yeah. or early to mid thirties. Yeah. yeah. But the lack of being present, like we we would talk with each other, but we weren't present with what each other was going through. Mm. We weren't attuned. We and so you know both of us are just winging it, man, yeah. surviving any way we knew how, getting into yeah. all kinds of trouble for making, causing all kinds of trouble for ourselves. Yeah, right. Better that. Said. <laughs> that the that the, the the mindful presence of another person might have helped us navigate differently. Yeah, definitely. Right. So, what what are the costs? The impact of a, of a yeah. lack of presence. Well, again, in the in the relational in the intimate relational space, the the number one cost is a lack of safety. Yeah, and I think that's that's surprising, and maybe even objectionable to a lot of men, because I mean the first objection that most men will come up with is, well, what do you mean? I, I, I don't hit her. Yeah. I'm not a danger. She knows, and she knows I'm not going to hit her. Yeah. Right. So most men equate <clears throat> safety with physical safety. And that's certainly important. Yeah. But what we don't get about safety, particularly in intimacy is that emotional safety mm. is something that also has to be tended to. Yeah. And, you know, you said earlier, like we men are carrying, we're, we're, there's so much being expected of us. I definitely have great compassion for men in an in intimate relationship. We get beat up a lot in yeah. therapy rooms and in culture for, you know, how we do intimacy and, and, but we weren't prepared to, to be nurturing our fathers and ancestors did not generally do that well, uh, yeah. hasn't been passed down to us. And all of a sudden it's being expected of us. Yeah. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I just have compassion for us, but we yeah, don't understand right. what emotional safety, even intellectual, mental safety, what yeah. is required, um, how that's created, I should say. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and one of the one of the things that I I am often pointing out to men is is that again, men and women we tend to approach we tend to experience safety differently. Mm. Like I, I remember being at a Tony Robbins, I think it was his date with destiny. I don't remember if you, you might've seen this, this demonstration. I think Alison Armstrong actually originated this. I think Tony borrowed it from Alison Armstrong, borrowed slash stole, same thing. And when he, he asks all the men in the room, you know, there's, there's my, there was like 2000 people. So he asks yeah. all the men, men in yeah. the room, if you felt unsafe in the last week, at any point in the last week, if you felt unsafe, raise your hand. Five I don't dudes. know, five dudes rose their hand out of a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. And then he asked the women the same question. And all but a five. A thousand, women. a thousand hands went up. At least. Yeah. That moment was 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 profoundly revealing for me. I just it just hadn't occurred to me that women live with, they live in the world, they live in a world where they constantly feel unsafe. Hmm. And now I'm just supposed to. Uh, I'm just expecting her to just feel safe with me because I'm not going to hit her. Mm. Right. And so first off, she's bringing a, an experience into the, into the room with me where she's already not feeling safe. Yeah. And now on top of that, if I don't know how to be <sighs> connected to myself, to be present with what mm. I'm feeling, what I'm going through, what's true for me. You know, one of the things that I think drives women absolutely crazy. And by the way, I like to say that women are only crazy because men are so clueless. And this is one of the ways that we are clueless. You know, that if you ever been asked by, by your partner, uh, why are you so angry? And then you're like, I'm not fucking angry, you know, <laughs> through gritted teeth, you know, veins popping out of your neck. I'm not angry. Yeah, you know, yeah. some kind of, well, that's an example of us not being present with ourselves. Yeah. And if we can't see that something's going on over here and speak to it, she can't trust us. Yeah. 
she yeah. can't trust that we're aware of the situation. So she has to defend herself. She and, and women will do that. They'll either do it by shutting down or by putting up their own, you know, bringing up their own masculine warrior stance yeah. to protect themselves. And so anyway, you know, lack of safety is the, is the first yeah. casualty of a lack of presence. Well, and you're, you're pointing to that in the, in the relationship space. I think one of the things that I'm, I'm really present to is, uh, bringing it just back into the, into the man himself, right? What's the lack of a powerful presence? Well, men are interested in something in the world. They're, they're, they're up to something. They want to accomplish something. They want to be something. One of the, one of the, the conversations that we have, uh, in our, in our elevate your relationship program is really around how do we help men stand in their power? Mm. And part of the way that, that men, really have an opportunity to stand in their power is through the habits that they have, the patterns that they're living out as a part of their life. And the easiest thing that there is for us to do as men in the world is just to continue doing what we're doing. It's the, it, in some ways it's the greatest desire that we have is just never have to change anything ever again. Right. Let's just have, let's just have what we have and let's just keep doing what we're doing. My, my dad, right. He, he, he got told by my mom, uh, back in the 1970s, that that was going to be the last house that they had to move in. And he was he was been resentful for the, for the last two moves because he thought that he was never going to have to move again. So I, <laughs> right. I, yeah. I, I, I understand the desire yeah. there, but yeah. it's easy for us to have to continue. But you ask a man, every man is really aware of, look, what's one thing that you're not doing now that if you started to do on a regular basis would have you be able to stand in your power more? That's another way of saying, how could you really be, be more powerfully present in your life? Every man is aware of at least one thing that he knows he wants to start doing because he believes that there's something that needs to be addressed. And there's a real opportunity that if he were to step into it, some, something new could be created in his life. And every man is also aware of that. There is probably something that he's doing that's sabotaging him. Every man is doing something that that isn't serving him, procrastinating, putting things off, you know, sacrificing what he wants most for what's giving him pleasure in the moment. We all are numbing out in some way. And the ways that we're numbing out, the impact of that is that we don't get to feel as fully enlivened as we want, right? So before we even are talking about a man trying to figure out how to show up well in a relationship, how is he standing in his power? That's why we, we foundationally, we start there in, in, our, in our program, because we want men who are fully enlivened, who are powerful in their own life, because when they're powerful in their own life, then they can lean into their intimacy lives yeah. and start to show up in ways for their partners where, where safety does get addressed. But yeah. when he's not doing it, I know from my own life experience, the guilt, the shame, the remorse, the, the, the not feeling like I'm good enough because I've had this thing that I've wanted to do, or I've had this thing that I've been doing for too long. And either way, I don't know how to start or stop those things. Like just sitting with the, and no wonder when, then we want to numb out. We don't want to feel those bad feelings. So there's this perpetual cycle and impact of us not actually being present on us that hits every person that loves us the most. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I see the, you're, you're pointing to, to the, the downward spiral that mm. as we are not connected to ourselves, not present with ourselves, yeah. with our own feelings, emotions, desires, needs, sensitivities, ambitions, all of that, whatever, if, as we're not present with ourselves, we are, are in we sacrifice our enlivenment, yes. Yes. our aliveness. Yes. And yes. then we show up in relationship again, coming back to relationship, we show up there and our partners can feel our lack of enlivenment. They can mm. feel, which is a, again, it's felt as a lack of presence. Yeah. And, and, and anyway, even when we are in, we, we even, I remember when I met, when I met Sylvie, I was so fucking lit up by my life. I was like mm. cranking on all cylinders. And so I entered that relationship with her. I was 41 and, um, I just entered that like on full fucking tilt speed. I was just cranking, man, loving mm. life. And she was drawn in by that. And then of course, within a very short period of time, we started running into our stuff, right? Because she would still get angry. Sometimes she would still have emotions. I would, <laughs> she didn't want her to have, she would be less than happy and thrilled sometimes. And I couldn't handle, I didn't know what to do with that. I didn't yeah, know. Right, and then right, my, right. and then it, it, see those moments I would check out 
Like, fuck this. Yeah. You know, my pattern was I'm going to cross my arms, turn away from you because fuck that. Mm. I don't not understand what you need. I don't know what you want. I don't want to give it to you because yeah. no one gave it. You know, the subtext is no one ever gave me presents. Yeah. No one ever, no one ever comforted me as a kid. Nobody ever helped yeah. me feel okay in my yeah. emotions. Why yeah. the fuck should I? It's almost like the the blueprint didn't get get, get built out in my system yeah. to be able yeah. to offer that to someone else. And I know that's not true for, for every man, but that was certainly my case. Well, and you're pointing to the fact that, you know, what happens for me also, I get stuck in the adolescent. I get stuck in my child, yeah. the yeah. banging, banging on the table, wanting, wanting what I don't have and what I don't know how to give. And I'm, I'm, I, I act like a baby sometimes. And that's just yeah. unfortunately the truth. And again, it's not because I don't want to do better. It's because I don't know how there hasn't yeah. been a model for me. And so this is where I think it's so critical, right? We can, we can talk about, about the, the, the reality of the pain and the difficulty and the why men check out and even the impact of it. But what really matters most is that we have, we're equipped with skills that we can now start practicing. How do we start practicing some different ways of being present? And it's not about changing everything. It's about changing one thing. If we're able to change one thing. So let's even just talk about the word presence, powerful presence. What does that even mean? Well, there's so much more I want to explore even in the, in the, the impact and the shame and all that, but let, let's, let's, I, I think this is a good, a good time to, to dive into that. What the hell does it even mean? <laughs> right. It's like a foreign presence. I'm in the same room as you. <laughs> let me, let me right? pull out my dictionary, see if there's a definition. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, as I've been doing this work for many, many years, and I've worked with a lot of women, uh, not just coaching them, but being coached by them, yeah. being yeah. taught, you know, some of my teachers, yeah. um, you know, presence, what I've, what I've come to understand about, about presence, you know, my, one of my teachers, uh, Steve James, he gave me a great definition of intimacy that, that I think speaks to, to, to profound presence. Mm -hmm. And it is simply intimacy is, is seeing what is there to be seen mm -hmm. and feeling what is there to be felt, feeling what is there to be felt, seeing what is there to be seen when I'm not present, I'm not paying attention to what's actually happening in the room. Mm. I'm, I'm wanting to ignore whatever my wife might be going through. I'm wanting to just tend to other things because I don't want to be with whatever the hell that is over there. Mm. Yeah. Essentially. But when I'm being present, I'm paying attention. I'm offering attention. Yes. Now that, yeah, paying attention is a weird term. It's like, it's like a cost. I'm, I have to pay something, but, but offering my attention, I'm yeah. offering my presence. I'm, I'm you know, one of the things that I'll often do when I start to argue with my wife, when I'm not being present, when I go into the, to whatever stories that take me out of, out of being present, you know, whether it's a frustration, a, uh, some anger, I'll cross my arms and turn away from her. Mm. You know, it's like I'm defending myself and I'm, I'm preparing for battle. And I've just, I, my body's in the room, but again, I've just checked out yeah. and she can feel that. So one of the things I do to bring myself present is I'll turn towards her, drop my arms and take a deep breath. Mm. All right. Now I'm first off, I'm bringing presence into my own body by just breathing, by also just noticing actually that my arms were crossed. I'm starting to now be present to what is actually happening in the room. And now from there, now I'm looking at my wife, I'm, I'm watching her face. I'm seeing what, what, what's, I'm hearing the tone of her voice, right? I'm just with, I am seeing what is actually here in this moment to be seen mm. and feeling what is actually here to be felt. Yeah. Just oftentimes that alone, just that willingness to turn towards her, take a deep breath, relax my arms, relax my body, <sighs> breathe deeply focus, offer my attention to her, yeah. just be present. A lot of times, like most of the times saying something isn't even necessary and often just yeah. gets in the way. Yeah. But she can feel, now she's feeling my presence such that, oh, she's feeling safe. It's a very primal reaction. It's a response that it's like I'm communicating to her through my body, through my eyes, through, 
you know, softening my stance while, while also though holding a strong attention towards her on a very primal level, she's, she's like, well, holy shit, he's with me. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's it. He's with me. Yeah. Which, which, which I, what I hear you saying is actually that the attention portion is the, the physically, right. You're in the room and you're pointed towards her. You're looking at her. You're listening to her. You're not lost in your head about things. Right. You yeah. are, you have your attention. Your, your, your ears are perked up. Your eyes are present. You're, you're engaged. I like, yeah. It, Think about it like the the Jedi mind trick, uh, right? Like <laughs> Luke, Luke, uh, yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. the 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 Jedi's were not not looking at the people; they were like so right. tuned in right, that right. they were tapped into their soul in some ways. But what I also hear you saying is that that attunement. It's like you're checked in to you, and you're checked in. You're attuned to them your feelings, your body sensations, their feelings, their body sensations. And again, what I yeah. don't hear you saying is going into a story about it, like getting, making yeah. up, oh, well, this is what's happening or being triggered by something in your past. It's like you're attentive and attuned. Well, and I'm also not, you know, I'll try to do the Jedi mind trick on her sometimes. And that's the, you know, trying to get her to see something a certain way. So I'll play that game mm. for a minute until it blows up in my face because it only always does. You know, the yeah, Jedi mind yeah, trick yeah. is like trying to get her to see things my way. That's what the Jedi mind yeah. trick is, right? There are no droids yeah. here. That's the famous. <laughs> there are no oh, droids right, right, here. Right. The droids and are I right just fucking in the front present of side. I don't, I don't no, mean no, I get like, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. But that's the, 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 the funny thing about that, that, that analogy is, is, is that it's still, I can, I can act like I'm being present and still not be present. Mm. I can stay calm. I can look at her. I can put my arms down, but I can still be in my agenda mm. versus being present. Yeah, being good. present doesn't have an agenda other than to just, okay, let's be with what's here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's presence being with what is here in this yeah. moment. Yeah. Well, and the, I guess what I'm also hearing you say is there the third aspect, I guess, of, of being powerfully present is, is being calm, right? Being grounded, being centered, be just uh, not, um, again, think about not being triggered, but it's really like you're tuned in and you're calm and relaxed and you're, you're, a um, you're available for what might be showing up. It doesn't mean that you stay calm forever and ever more, but there you're bringing a calm presence to, to, a, to what's happening in the moment. You know, I think it's, I guess it occurs for me. Like, it's like, I, I may or may not be calm, but what I, what I am when I'm present is I'm a, I'm a, I'm an open space for everything that's in the room, including if I'm angry, mm. I, I think, you know, sometimes uh, some of my most skillful moments of being present is just being able to say, you know what? I feel really fucking angry right mm. now. Yeah. I'm really angry. And, and that, saying it in a calm way, by the way. Well, that's the thing. You're right. That's yeah. right. No, saying yeah. it in a calm way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think because that we're all, yeah, man, nobody gets this perfect. No, that's right. I've never met anybody who doesn't fucking get upset sometimes. <laughs> Not a fucking person. I've worked some with I've worked with some amazing people on yeah. the planet. You know, some yeah. of the the some of the most some of our so what do I like our for, most spiritual luminaries, you know, like like Marion Williamson, um shit, who else have I worked with? Byron Katie. Like I've been in the presence of some of these amazing people and I've seen them lose their shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and so, so I, I just, I want to caution us against like calm as an ideal, yeah. but rather being a space holder for all my yeah. space yeah, holder. Yeah. I just mean being able to be a witness and allow to my state to her state, yeah. right? That's in a way that's, so we, we, in our elevate your relationship program for men, we, we talk about the, like these three skills. Of, of powerful presence stand in our power. Yeah. And we're really talking about the, the first and the third stand in our power is the first elevate our thoughts is the second. Yeah. yeah. We could talk about that briefly and embrace intimacy. So we're talking mm. about embracing intimacy, embrace intimacy means being with what, what is, is 
what is in the room in this yeah. moment. Yeah. Yeah. Not locked up in our heads about things, which is where I have a tendency to live, but being tapped in, this is where, when you said, you know, you're angry right now. I, I don't get that as much as I get a question of how are you doing? And my answer is almost always I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah. But, yeah. but when I uh -huh. really, when I'm asked that question and I really tap into that and I say, you know what, I'm actually mm. third. I feel tension in my shoulders. I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling excited. I'm feeling hopeful. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I'm feeling, that's how I'm doing actually. Like it, having all of those things happen at the same time. Now my wife can trust me because I'm actually saying something that she can understand, that she can hear. I'm fine is a bullshit answer almost 99.9% .9 of the time. It's a bullshit answer. It's me being locked yeah. up somewhere and yeah. not really be attuned yeah. to what's happening with me. Yeah. I'm never just fine. There's a yeah. variety of shit that's happening inside right. of me at any given moment. And if I'm not tapped into it, attuned to it, she can't count on me to, to be intimate with her in that moment. That's it. Can't count on me. Can't yeah. count on me. And the thing that I, I really want to impress upon men and women listening is that we, we do have this ideal, especially men. I think women may, may occur for many of them differently, but I know many of them have this ideal as well that, that like when we're doing this, well, it's like what I said to my wife, we're just going to be happy and thrilled all the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's going to be yeah. no disharmony ever. No, I call right. that masculine utopia. We have yeah. no problems here. That no, is a right. mask. That is a purely masculine representation of utopia. Yeah. Yeah. No problems here. All the problems yeah. have been solved. Nothing we have to do. And that's just not, that is not a real place yeah. that yeah. we humans will yeah. ever get to live in. And so yeah. being present is not yeah. about, is, mm. it doesn't necessarily, or maybe even ever make all your problems go away. Yeah. But being pre and, but what being present does is it allows the fullness of both you and whether it's a, an intimate partner or a friend or a family member, it, it allows the fullness of you and them to be in the room. Yeah. Well, and, and what, one of the things I think you're pointing to that, that I'm profoundly experiencing right now with something that my daughter is going through, uh, yesterday she shared something with me that was just heartbreaking. And, and at the end of it, I didn't say much to her other than to say, you know, what happened is not your fault. And mm -hmm. you didn't do anything wrong mm -hmm. and I'm here and I'm sorry. And I love you. And that's pretty much all I said. And at the end of the conversation, she said, out of everybody that I've told, you're the one that, that listened the best. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm reminded of, you know, you, you profoundly changed my life maybe five years ago when you shared with me right in front of you before you go and have you know, conversations or coaching sessions, you have these three things. And one of them is your presence is a gift. Yeah. This reminder, right. because sometimes the things that I think that I need to say or do are nothing in comparison, just, just to have my presence be mm. there. Yeah. So my, mm. you know, we get taught and told that we actually have to perform in order mm -hmm. for us to get love as men. Mm -hmm. We have to earn it. We have to earn it. Yeah. But, but what if what we, what was really required of us is that we just needed to be there. We just yeah. needed to be present. And when we got tapped into, when I got tapped into, because you introduced this idea that my presence is a gift, mm. then I get to just show up. Mm. Yep. I get to just show up. I don't have to show out. I don't have to impress. I don't have to do a song and a dance. But if I show up for my daughter, for my wife, for my work, for my clients, for my, for, for this world, then I'm bringing the gift that there is for me to bring. And I don't have to do anything else with it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Thank you for represencing that because that, that too has been transformative for me that my, my presence is a gift. I mean, look, I'm thinking about my own father. Hmm. I'm, I'm not in relationship with my father right now. And, and look, there's a lot that could be said about that. Um, but one of the things that I'm, <laughs> my dad just stopped showing up a long fucking time ago. Hmm. You know, as you're talking, what I'm, what I'm aware of is like, I don't have to do this perfect. Yeah. Just show up. <laughs> and my dad, yeah. 
doesn't have to do shit perfect. Just fucking show up. And he yeah. stopped showing up years ago. And I remember oh. he said something to me in one of our conversations as I was over the, you know, the last five, seven years, I've been trying to pull him back into relationship with me. Is he's like, well, you know, you, you don't need me. Mm. I'm like, the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. You're my what is father. that? What do you, you're my father. The fuck you mean? I don't need you. But he doesn't, you know, for whatever reason, that's his story and he's sticking to it because yeah. I'm successful. I have a, I, I'm married. I've got a, you no, know, but I have it's, a, it's because he doesn't know. He thinks that he has to perform and he doesn't know how to perform for you anymore. But that's, that's yeah, exactly. Exactly. There's no performance that he can offer. He doesn't understand that. Yeah. I just need your presence. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so it's, 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 tr I mean, again, we talk, talk about the impact. I, my oh. father, I don't have a relationship with him. He doesn't have a, I'm a, I'm a cool fucking dude. My dad is missing <laughs> out on hanging out with a cool mofo because he doesn't just, he, he completely yeah. is not present and doesn't know how to show up. Yeah. yeah and, hard, you know, we'll just want to round home base here by, yeah. by, you know, speaking to my, my, my relationship with, with Sylvie, my relationship with you, my relationship no, with, man. you know, the, the people that matter most to me is and I'll just, you know, share about my wife though, specifically it's, it's fundamentally different yeah. than, than anything I've ever experienced before. And it's not because she's somehow this magic creature. Like she's you know, happy and thrilled <laughs> as my <laughs> fantasy would have had her be. No, she's all over the map emotionally. It's, it's because look, and she's, a, she's amazing. Yeah, right. Let me, let course. me not take all the credit. I'll just take my, I'll just take my part. She owns so much of the responsibility for why we're, why I think our relationship is fundamentally different, but I also know, how to be powerfully present in a way that I never, never understood before. Yeah. Now let's be clear. I fail every day, uh, every too. single day. I have my yeah. moments where I maybe just in a moment I check out or I just like, I just can't fucking deal with whatever's happening in front of me right now. Yeah. But yeah. I do have skills to come back into presence. Yeah. Some of the things that we've shared with you, with our listeners today, you know, even just like the way I, I breathe and hold my body and look at her, yeah. the, my posture, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, I have skills, I have awareness that when I lack presence or lose presence or, or I hear the feedback from her that she misses me in this moment. And she'll say that, it's one of the things she'll often say is I miss you. And I'll be like, the fuck are you talking about? I'm right here. Same thing. Right, she doesn't right, say I don't right. feel connected to you. She says, yeah. I miss you. I miss you. <laughs> We're literally in bed next to each other. She'll say, I miss you. <laughs> what? <laughs> but I understand now yeah. what she's talking about. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so it, it becomes more of a playful engagement rather than an adversarial, yeah. the yeah. fuck you talking about, yeah. you know, argument. So yeah, that's my story. Yeah. And I, mine, mine is not dissimilar. I, I, one of the things that, that is true for my wife and I, we are sometimes two ships passing in the night. I travel a bunch, uh, for, for my work and I'm on the road and, uh, you know, we've got this beautiful work that we get to do and I'm taking care of kids and see, she's running a coaching business and doing really amazing things with, successful women in the world and managing what our home is. So we had two ships passing the night. We were literally sending each other meeting notices to notify where each of us are at any given moment. But at, at the end of each day, whether or not I'm in town or out of town, we spend five minutes with each other and we ask each other two questions. How did you feel loved by me today? And where did I miss the mark? That is a, that is a call to our presence, the ways that we are being present that matter and the ways that we could, we could show up differently for one another. And at the end of that, we, we say a, a short prayer for one another, ultimately a, a prayer of thanksgiving for mm -hmm. who that, who she is for me, who I am for her, the, the family that we have, the life that we're getting to live. And that is a moment that we get to have every single day. And I used to think that, well, my presence, well, I have work and I have, what do you mean you need? Like sometimes five minutes that is done every day yeah. is the greatest gift that we can be giving to each other. And, uh, you know, I really credit my wife cause she was a stand for that as a, as a, as a connection ritual. Yeah. And it makes all the difference in the world for our presence in each other's lives. 
Well, I think that's that's a key thing to point out as well, is that it, we don't have to be present every minute of every day. And I don't even believe that that's possible. Mm, right, it's not, right. or even advisable. I wouldn't even advise it. You got to go right. fucking live your independent life also. <laughs> Jesus. Freedom, freedom. <laughs> but But taking the intentional taking intentional time every day, non-productive time to yeah, just connect, yeah, whether yeah. it's five minutes or 30 minutes or you, 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 uh, a, a time you choose at the end of the day, beginning of the day, or you just make sure you sprinkle it throughout the day. Yeah. yeah. But, but br making presence intentional is absolutely mm. game changing. Yeah. You know, as I, as I, as I often will remind couples I work with, if, if, if when you know how to stay connected, to create connection, you can get through anything. Yeah, that's right. But if you don't know how to create connection, you can, you might not be able to get through almost anything. Just, mm. just not knowing how to load the dishwasher will yeah. fuck you up <laughs> <laughs> for months, years to literally, come. Literally, literally. So right. how'd we do? How'd we do Tate? How, do I have Tate? no idea. I have no I mean, idea how I we did, but I, I love having these conversations with you and yeah. I, I hope they serve the world uh, out there in some, some even small way. And it's just such an honor to, to do it. Same. I, I never know. We never know. We never, we know, never know. So, but to our dear listeners, before you rush off this podcast into whatever other content or busyness is, is waiting for you, we challenge you to take a few moments to reflect on what you've heard here. Remember, our formula is awareness plus action equals transformation. So what is one insight that you're taking away with you from this conversation? And what's one action that you're going to take as a result of what you've heard here today? We genuinely want to know. And you can email either of us or both of us directly at brian at menthisway.com. Remember, it's brian with a Y at menthisway.com and Tate, spelled T-A-I-T, -T, at menthisway.com. I am Brian Reeves, Brian with a Y, Reeves. And I am Tate Arend. Yes, you are. And hmm. thank you so much for joining us on Men This Way. <laughs>